In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus gives us the signs of the end of the age. And one of the end time strategies of the enemy is going to be deception. He is a deceiver and many are going to fall away. It talks about the great apostasy or the great falling away of the body of Christ. People are going to be deceived into going off into different religions or not believing in Christ at all or believing false Christ. It said many false prophets will arise and those times many are going to say, I am the Christ and not to believe them. But there's another sign in here that I want to point out to you today that is really important. And Jesus says in Matthew 24, 10, and then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The sign, one of the signs of the end times is going to be lovelessness. People are going to lose their love for one another. And Jesus tells us in John 13, 34, that this is how you'll know my disciples. This is how you'll know my people is because they love one another. The great commandment, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. We're commanded to love each other. This is going to be how we're going to know the followers of Christ, and there'll be other characteristics as well, but we cannot lose our love as believers. We have to look at Revelation chapter 2. It's very sobering, the church in Ephesus, where it says, I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. I know you're enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary, but this I have against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. And this is what God is putting on my heart and the message that I want to share with you today and why I'm making this video. If you're out there and you have what is labeled a discernment ministry online, which means you're you're evaluating sermons, you're calling people out, calling this person false and that person false and warning the body of Christ, then I want you to remember the scripture in Revelation 2. I want you to ask yourself, are you doing this because God called me to do this? And are you doing this out of a place of love? Because the book of James says that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And the things that I'm seeing is more of scoffing, mocking, making fun of, laughing at people. And you're trying to draw a crowd unto their channel, unto themselves, making fun of the charismatic crowd or making fun of people who are doing different things. Are some of them uh, completely off their rocker and false and just in left field and false leaders and teachers? Absolutely. It happens. The Bible tells us that those people are going to arise in the last days, but not everyone is in that category. Sometimes we don't have it right. Sometimes we miss the mark. And I just want to challenge people. Are you doing this out of a place of anger? Are you doing this to draw attention onto yourself? Or are you actually doing this because you care about people? We got to remember, Jesus said, get the log out of your own eye before you're worried about the speck in your brother's eye. Is the purpose of calling one another out and calling this a discernment ministry? Is your purpose behind it reconciliation and, and unity in the body of Christ? Or is it to tear another person down in the name of God, in the name of Jesus? We have to be careful what we're stamping God's name on, and we have to be careful of the intention of our heart. Jesus is the one who searches heart and mind, Revelation chapter 3. He knows why you're doing what you're doing. He knows why we do everything we do. Every careless word you speak, you'll be judged for. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, the Bible tells us. There's many signs that what comes out of our mouth points to what is in our heart. So I just want to challenge you today. I'm not saying everybody is angry. I'm not saying everybody's doing it for the wrong motives. There are some that do it respectfully and according to the biblical standards that are set forth for doing so. But there's others that are not. There's others that are doing it to mock and make fun. And I just want you to remember and point out to you Revelation chapter 2. And for my charismatic friends out there, I want to remind you what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 1 says, if we speak in the tongues of men and angels, 
but we have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. And then he goes on to tell us the characteristics of love. And then we remember what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, when he says, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not do many mighty works in your name? And he says, depart from me. I did not know you, you worker of iniquity. So neither signs or wonders are a sign of a man or woman of God. People can do things in the name of Jesus and still go to hell. That's what that verse is telling us. One of the signs of the end of the age is we lost our love. We lost our love. Are you loving your neighbor as yourself? I personally believe in the spiritual gifts and I operate in them. You'll see that on my channel. I believe in prophecy. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in healing. I believe in deliverance and the casting out of demons. I believe in all of this. I believe what Acts 2.17 says, that in the last day, uh, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. I believe that scripture. I believe that passage. I believe what the Bible says. I believe 1 Corinthians 13 this same passage where he says we prophesy in part because we know in part and that love is the only thing that's going to remain and spiritual gifts will cease when the perfect comes which is when we get to heaven or when we die the lord desires unity in the body of christ we got the arm cursing the leg we got the hand cursing the foot saying i don't need you you're wrong and we're coming against each other are some of them false are some of them wrong are some of them out of line absolutely but it exists on both sides now i just want to remind this community i want to remind everybody that might be involved in this if you see this video are you doing this are you motivated by the love of god are you motivated by the desire for reconciliation are you motivated by the desire of unity have you checked your own heart? Have you come to your own place of repentance before the Lord, before just calling out your brother? That goes for both of us. We don't have to agree on all of the secondary issues, but can we still love and respect and honor one another and respectfully disagree? with each other? Can we learn how to actually have a conversation and not just drive by saying you're false, you're this, you're that, cursing one another? Can we actually do and follow what the Word of God says where it says to rebuke, reprove, but also exhort with all patience and teaching? You don't just say, oh, you're false and move on. The book of Timothy tells us that we correct with all gentleness and patience. We're doing it because we want people to know the truth, not to tear one another down to build ourselves up. I just want to challenge you with that and remind all of us as believers that we should be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ because there's a world out there that is dying. And instead of tearing one another down, tearing one another apart, if the Holy Spirit lives in us, he's gonna give us discernment. And if we know the word of God and walk by the word of God, he's gonna give us discernment and we're gonna be able to see and spot what is false. I hope you will hear what I'm saying. And I'm saying this out of love. I say this, it hurts my heart, it breaks my heart to see the division, the fighting and the bickering. Paul addresses this in first Corinthians chapter 3 are you not merely acting human instead of spiritual when you do this and cause divisions among each other I say this with all humility and love and desire for unity in the body of Christ for us to exhort lift up one another because the time is coming where we're gonna need one another we are gonna need to lean on our brother in Christ I hope this was encouraging to somebody out there if you're not subscribed I would really appreciate it and hit that thumbs up button that's the like button and that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people I appreciate your time and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one